Okay, we've all been there. You're just going about your day and you feel it, that mysterious kind of tender bump under your skin. And your mind just starts racing. What is this thing? Is it bad? Well, today we're gonna demystify one of the most common culprits out there, the ingrown hair cyst, right? It's so common, but also so frustrating. You're not alone in wondering what's going on. So let's get right into it and figure out what's actually happening beneath the surface. So at its heart, an ingrown hair cyst is really just your body playing defense. It all starts with one pesky hair that gets trapped. Maybe it curled back on itself or just grew sideways. Your body sees that hair as an intruder, like a little splinter, and it springs into action, building a wall around it. That's what causes the inflammation and that bump, which often fills up with fluid. Knowing the definition is one thing, but how can you be pretty sure that's what you're looking at on your own skin? Let's become detectives for a minute and walk through the key visual clues. Think of this as your personal identification checklist. First up, appearance. You're looking for a raised, swollen bump, usually with a little halo of redness around it. Now, look closer at the center. If you see a white or yellowish dot, that's a classic sign of pus under the surface. As for size, they can be anything from a tiny little speck to about the size of a pea. And if you touch it gently, the bump itself will likely feel firm and smooth. Now, these things can technically pop up anywhere you have hair, but they definitely have their favorite spots. Just think about any area where there's friction, from shaving, from waxing, even from your clothes rubbing. That's why the beard area, the neck, under your arms, and yep, the bikini line are the most common battlegrounds for these annoying bumps. An ingrown hair cyst doesn't just show up out of nowhere fully formed. Nope, it actually has a whole life cycle. Understanding its journey from a tiny irritation to a full-on cyst is super helpful. So here's how it usually plays out. It starts small, in the early stage, just a little raised spot, maybe a bit red, a little itchy. But as your body keeps reacting, it progresses. The bump gets bigger, more swollen, and definitely more tender. At its peak, it becomes a mature, defined cyst. And from that point, it has two possible futures. It either starts to calm down and resolve on its own, or it can get infected and demand a little more of your attention. It's not just about what it looks like. It's about what it feels like. These symptoms are your body's way of talking to you. Pain and itching? Super common. But the ones you really need to watch for are the signs of infection. If the area feels warm to the touch, if the redness is spreading, or if the swelling is getting worse. Those are the big red flags. And hey, if you keep getting bumps in the exact same spot, that's a pattern worth paying attention to. And this, of course, brings us to the ultimate question. The one we're all thinking. It's just sitting there, being annoying. And that temptation to just give it a good squeeze and be done with it, ah, it is real. But should you? As satisfying as it might seem in your head, the clear medical advice is a hard no. Resist the urge. When you try to pop a cyst, you can actually push all that trapped gunk and bacteria deeper into your skin. This can make the infection way worse and, you guessed it, can leave you with a permanent scar instead of a temporary bump. Not a good trade. Okay, so if popping is officially off the table, what's the game plan? What should you actually do? Let's build your action plan right now. Your plan really boils down to two paths. For most of these, home care is gonna be your best friend. A simple warm compress a few times a day can work wonders to reduce swelling and encourage it to heal. Gently exfoliating and wearing loose clothes also helps reduce irritation. But, and this is a big but, you have to know when it's time to call in the pros. If that cyst just keeps coming back, if it's causing you a lot of pain, or if you see any of those signs of infection we talked about, that is your signal to stop the home remedies and see a professional. And here's a little piece of reassuring news. A lot of the time, the best treatment is just a bit of patience. With some gentle care and, well, time, your body is pretty amazing and will often take care of these cysts all on its own. So treating the bump you have now is great. But what about stopping the next one before it even starts? Let's talk about the long game, prevention. This is where you really get to take back control. Prevention really comes down to building five simple, powerful habits. First, exfoliate regularly. This clears away the dead skin cells that can trap hairs in the first place. Second, check your shaving technique. 
Always use a clean blade and shave in the direction your hair grows. This leaves a blunter tip on the hair, making it way less likely to curl back into the skin. Third, moisturize. Soft, hydrated skin is more flexible. Fourth, if shaving is just a constant problem for you, maybe it's time to look at other options. And finally, number five, just good old-fashioned hygiene. Keeping your skin clean is one of the easiest ways to lower your risk of infection. So there you have it. You know how to spot the bump, you have an action plan for what to do, and you've got the tools for prevention. The knowledge is officially in your hands. So the only real question left is, what's the one small habit you're going to change starting today? Thanks for tuning in.